Hello, Rob Venn here. Today we're going to be looking at analyzing some adverts of the big issue. Now, in this video, I'll be textually analyzing four adverts from the big issue, 17th to 23rd of October 2016, issue number 1227. You do need to know that, remember? This is component two, section B magazines, mainstream and alternative media. Now, the actual instructions say we only have to do three key adverts. Now, why four? Because one of them is page 50, which is one of the advert pages, which is going to be coming out of the last main pages. And the last one is the, well, it's basically the poster for I, Daniel Blake, and you need to know that anyway, so why not do that as well? Right, we're looking at AO1 and AO2, that's what you're being assessed on. So you've got to be taking your knowledge of media theory, which is AO1. And applying it to the context of the media and you're going to be using these theories to analyze media products and judging the theories in relation to that text that's what AO2 is about theory wise for this particular activity your basics semiotics Roland Bart you're going to be needing to use terms like denoted connoted and for a stretch and challenge one anchorage structuralism claude levi strauss basically we're just looking at binary opposites here um in terms of representation we can be looking at stuart hall and david gauntlet and how they shape representations for power and media industries we need to be looking at james Cameron and gene seaton we need to be considering that in relationship to audiences in particular how this magazine is not just there to make profit which brings in Karen and Seaton, doesn't it? They're not just there to make profit. This is here to spread a political message and it's there as a charitable, one thing with a charitable concern really, is there to allow you know, homeless people to be able to make money. It's got an ideology, it's got a manifesto. However, we can also look at cultivation theory and how um, this magazine is creating um, an idea of what the world is. We may even bring in a bit of uh, Gerber and Gross uh, mean world syndrome as a bit of stretch and challenge. But then, of course, we can look at reception theory, how the audience is going to react to that. That's just Stuart Hall. So essentially, which ones of these are we looking at? Well, this one in particular, uh, that one, um, not so much that one or those ones really. No, no, um, certainly that one. Um, no, not really, not really that one. Uh, all that one but certainly this one's an important one we're also going to be looking at well frankly all of that that one yes definitely particularly this one that's particularly important uh, and that one and that one and frankly that one and definitely that one that's very important to a lesser extent that one so this is going to be covering most of what you're expected to know about for this topic right first things first we need to know what all the different bits of a magazine are called not a magazine like an advert now obviously one of the key things you're going to need is the company logo now this is actually a charity but you're going to need to know the name of the company which in this case is your company logo up there you're going to have some kind of title or headline. This is called the header. This is this bit. Any text on there, if you've got a large block of text on it like that, that's your body copy. All art is obviously called artwork. What's particularly important in an advert though, and especially in a charity advert, is a call to action. So please help today. What can you do? In this case, you need contact information, so who are you going to contact? Um, this one's also got a tear off, you can cut the bottom off this, you can send that in. Um, seems a little archaic in the world of the internet, but never mind. Now, that's what all the different bits are called. So remember, header, company logo, body copy, artwork, all them are pretty much associated with magazines anyway, but call to action is a good one. Right, now, with the big issue this is not like other magazines okay remember from Karen and Seaton's point of view 
the media is controlled by a small number of pro companies. They're primarily driven by the logic of profit and power. In other words, the job of the vast majority of media is to deliver audiences to advertisers. When it comes to most magazines or television or radio or internet or whatever, you, the audience, are the product. If you're getting it for free, if you're paying for it, maybe not so much, but you are the product. That's the purpose. They make profit from selling advertising revenue. The big issue is different. The big issue has a manifesto. Okay. The point of the big issue is to actually help poor people, homeless people in particular, drag themselves out of poverty. So, as it says at the bottom here, we believe in prevention. Right. So this is not just about helping the homeless people. It's helping to prevent people from becoming homeless in the first place. So we believe poverty is indiscriminate, which is why we provide anyone whose life is blighted by poverty, pro, pro, poverty with the opportunity to earn legitimate income. And that's going to become relevant later on. Now. Of course, what we've also got here is the idea that we're looking at more diverse, socially diverse ownership. So this is more like a charity than it is a profit driven company. We also need to consider who the audience for the big issue is. This is just the big issue north, but it's the same principle. 50 50 men and women, average age of 46. So we're looking at an older middle aged audience. They are socially, ethically, and environmentally aware. Now, this is going to become particularly important when we look at the kind of advertising that's in the big issue. They should be well informed, should strive for quality, and are important for a company to act ethically. They wouldn't pay more for quality goods, they pay more for environmentally friendly products, and they buy fair trade and organic where possible. At the heart of all our readers is a strong social responsibility, an ethical mind, and a passion to make a difference. Now, that is a key theme that runs across most of this advertising. They are for products that have got some kind of environmentally friendly element, they're fair trade, they're organic, or they're for charities that are calling the reader to action to help contribute to make a difference. Now, this is the first one I wanted to look at. I'm not going to go into this one in any particular detail, to be perfectly honest, because it's not as important as the other ones we're going to look at. But a couple of things that struck me. One, when it comes into the idea of environmentally or ethically conscious companies, this one ties in. As we can see down here, the Sunday Times Best Green Companies, the Observer Ethical Retailer of the Year. So those two elements definitely tie in with the target audience for the big issue. They also want quality products, according to the media pack, and this is how this is selling itself. It's selling itself as a quality product. But the reason I picked this one is because of its potential negotiated reading from Stuart Hall point of view. This is the first advert that appears in the magazine and it's for beds. There is a somewhat ironic, almost twisted idea of having a bed advert as the first advert you see in a magazine sold by homeless people who are sleeping rough on the streets. So from a preferred dominant hegemonic position, the idea is, oh, that's a good deal. That's a nice bed. That's a good quality product. And look how socially conscious they are. That's a product I should invest in. However, a negotiated position, the first thing I looked at it, I went, oh, that's a bit dodgy, isn't it? I'm not going to go into it in any more detail on that one because it's not that important. But I just thought that's a nice little point you could talk about. <coughs> now, next one. This is an advert for Turn to Us, Fighting UK Poverty. Now, this is a charity. So up here, we've got our charity information telling us that it's a registered charity. Um, notice how down here we've got our call to action. Also notice how it's using the internet and up here we've got a hashtag as well. 
So not only, even if you're not, you know, this isn't going to help you personally, you can be using the hashtag to spread awareness of it. So it's a call to action, even for people who don't need this service. Um, other thing is, let's look at this artwork here. What we've got here being represented is a ordinary looking person. So if you're looking at Stuart Hall, you're looking at George Gervner, we're talking about the idea that we've got, not George Gervner, sorry, um, David Gauntlet. We've got this idea that we're looking at an ordinary person. This isn't a celebrity, it's not someone famous. It's an ordinary person. There's a level of personal identification here. This could be any person. It's any woman. This could be you. It could be your mum. It could be your nan. It could be your sister. It's that kind of empathy and pathos it's going for. Look at the mise-en-scene. Look at how this is obviously someone's kitchen. We've got the cooker here. We've got the cupboards in the background. This is giving a sense of the ordinary, the sort of like the mundane. It's got a very similitude of realism to it. What else have we got denoted here? Um, look at the anchorage between the body copy and the image, right? Look at this font. This is what we would call a script font. It looks like handwriting. This is giving it a sense of the personal. It's giving it a sense of, you know, as if she's written it, even though it's clearly typed. Notice how it's got this sort of like personal address as well. It's telling us a story, there's a narrative to this. You could even bring in Todder off of that, couldn't you? She's saying, money was tight when my husband became terminally ill. Pathos, sadness. We thought we were going to be made homeless. Well, that ties in with the magazine's entire reason for existing. Then we found out we were entitled to pension credit. It was only 10p a week, but it made us eligible for help with housing costs. It meant we could stay in our home. So this ties in with the manifesto from the big issue about preventing poverty, about helping everybody in poverty. Because if you can stop people from becoming homeless in the first place, then you don't have to fight homelessness. So that's your body copy. Um, the purple colour. Well, if we're looking at color theory um it's a kind of a warm color it um is slightly feminine but a little bit you know androgynous it's neither male or female so it could be anybody um notice however you've got this arrow shape here being denoted again this is telling you you can do something it's sort of like showing a direction that you could go check out what you can get a turn to us .org.uk slash benefits aware. That's like what we call in magazine industry parlance a turn. It's getting you to do something. Now, in the basic element, that's turning the page, but in this case, it's going off and doing something. It's your call to action. Um, in terms of social class, we're looking at someone here who's what we categorize as in the sort of like the E category, presumably. Looking at her age, she's probably. Um, not working because she's probably retired she's on state pension and benefits so that puts her from the nrs social grades down into the e category um what else can we talk about um however she's smiling so even though she's in a, a tough position um it's showing an element of hope that things can be done to make the world better so if we look some theory wise, we look at media effects by Albert Bandura. This is the idea that the media can implant ideas into the mind of the audience directly. The idea that the audience acquires attitudes, emotional responses and new styles of conduct through modeling. So what it's doing is it's got this, um, this sort of like direct message straight to the audience. It's a um, hypodermic needle effect, if we want to go into that kind of element. It's directly putting a message straight into the audience's brains. But not the most complicated of adverts. Um, there are lots of diagonals, lots of diagonal lines like this look. Right? This is a diagonal line, that's diagonals. Diagonals are good because they create a sense of dynamic energy. 
they suggest progress and movement. They make it more exciting. Right, next one. Back into the media effects. This ties in again with the socially conscious message of the magazine and the socially conscious beliefs of its audience. It's trying to model behaviour for us. So, National Adoption Week. Notice the predominance of purple and pink, I guess, and um, burgundies, these kind of colours, um, and blues. They're not the warmest of colours. Um, not entirely sure, personally, why these colours are predominating. Um, perhaps there's a... I don't know, it's the colour of, say, the heart, maybe? No, not entirely sure there. But nonetheless, note this, and this is a lot of adverts that we're going to be looking at. Look at how they use, in the company logo, this childlike script font, as if it had been written by a child. This again is tugging on our heartstrings. It's talking about, you know, youth and innocence. Lots of hearts we're going to see in these kind of logos as well, because it's about sharing, it's about love, it's about emotion, it's about caring. So this is our company logo. Note this is National Adoption Week. Uh, look at the date, 17th to 23rd of October. That's the release date of this particular issue. Um, if we look again at our call to action, which is in our body text, there are thousands of children in England waiting for a forever family. That's a good term. That's very emotive. That's very caring. You know, it's suggesting that these kids are used to being shunted off from one foster family to another one. They want them sort of be forever. Show that you care. Again, it's personal. It's a direct address. It's straight to the audience. Okay. Is also a call of action. Show that you care to help raise awareness of adoption by sharing the hashtag support adoption, which is gone repeated down here in this banner. It's not actually asking you to adopt anybody. That's a bit too much. That's asking a lot. It's just asking you to do a little thing, just one little thing, to share this hashtag. Right? Anyone can do that without any major commitment. So it's raising awareness, getting you to do something, make you feel better about yourself. Again, if we look at the art, again, it's ordinary people. Quite an unusual photograph, this, to be perfectly honest. Um, but look, they're ordinary people. Again, if we're going into the sort of like ideal self, ideal partner, Carl Rogers kind of area, this could be anyone. It could be any man, any woman. It could be you. It could be your parents. Yeah. That's what it's aiming at. Notice they're the same age as the target audience of the magazine. They're in their mid 40s, well, I'll say they're probably a bit older than that, 40s, 50s, possibly. Right? But it's all about look at how happy they look, look at how smiling they are, look how playful they are. Um, look at the hugging and the smiling. It's all very much drawing our attention. They're an ordinary family. This could be, look at the mise en scene. This could be anybody's living room. Right? But again, notice the, the colours are, 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 are followed through. The blue of the jeans matches the blue of the logo and the text. The grey is a constant theme across all of it as well. The uh, pinky purpley colour as well ties in with this banner down here as well. So there's a lot of continued, there's, there's definitely a house style going on here. Um, but again, I think that's the point here. It's in any person, it's anybody. It's a call to action because it could be you. You too could be adopting somebody and making somebody happy. This advert down here, we said that the average audience member or reader of Big Issue is in their mid to late 40s. So this is a product, Waterfall de Manus, Manus? I don't know, something like that. It's some kind of... Um, alternative medicine supplement for a healthy bladder. People who are this age are starting to get bladder problems, let's face it, a little bit of incontinence maybe if you're older. So it's the kind of product that these people might want to be buying. Um, but notice how the people denoted here are an awful lot younger. That's making them an ideal self or ideal partner. Very different to the ones up here, to be honest. These are ordinary looking. This look, these look much more like models. They're prettier, more ordinary look, uh, less, less ordinary looking. 
But again, look at the big smiles, the super smiler smiles, they're happy. Right? Notice how many stars there are. Stars are associated with quality and success. Notice how it uses words like winner, pharmacy favorite. What does that mean? Who give them that? Yeah, is that a magazine? Is it something they made up? Who knows? Down here, best alternative product service, best alternative product winner from Cam. Who are these people? It doesn't matter. It looks impressive. I mean, frankly, if alternative medicine was any good, it would be medicine. But you know, it's sort of, I guess, ties in with the sort of more, if we're going to be stereotypical, hippie-ish nature, nature of the kind of people who might buy the big issue. Again, notice how it's using um, pull quotes. This one secret everyone should know about. Notice the juxtaposition, the anchorage of the quote with the image. She's whispering, it's a secret, and it makes them happy. Um, says Sue in Workington. Again, who the hell is Sue in Workington? could be anybody why would I trust what Sue's got to say doesn't matter it sounds personal it's an ordinary person notice it's Sue in Workington it's not the British Medical Council yeah it's not the NHS but never mind call to action call us read over using the internet again this arrows are turns telling you to go and do something go to their website turn the page down here's a banner with their tagline and new approach to bladder health, cystitis and prostitutes. So, you know, trying to persuade you to want to read. And look at the colors, green. Green is, is a natural color, it reminds us of nature. Um, not much more to talk about for that one, I don't think really. I mean, a negotiated position, or in fact, a more oppositional position would be alternative medicine's twaddle. And um, frankly, it shouldn't even be in there. You shouldn't be advertising this stuff as just expensive gunk. Um, can't see anyone even having an uh, oppositional read to adoption, to be perfectly honest. I'm sure some people might have one. Anyway, that's again, it's a hypodermic needle effect. It's trying to inject a message straight into your brain, really, isn't it? Now, again, this is one we've analysed in class. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail. But again, notice this chain of hope advert. Notice the script font. Notice the heart. Just like in the National Adopt um, Adoption Week logo. It's, again, it's about hearts. We associate that with love. We associate it with passion. We associate it with tenderness and caring children's handwriting style of the script font make it look personal again look at the colors it's blue it's purple it's gray these seem to be very much on trend with all these adverts for some reason but again look at the calls to action are you the special person we're looking for not any old person you're a special person the body text here has got his body copy has got the message going on this is the company logo with its tagline. Again, down here, we've got the contact information. Do you have a spare room? Are you in the M25 corridor, etc.? Course of action. Down here, this one, again, is all about the ethical um, products that the big issue reader is interested in. The kinds of companies that have got an ethical message, uh, environmentally sound, it's very much tying in with this. Um, again, it's got an offer to attract people's attention. Notice to bleat about because they're sheep. See what they did there, right? A special opportunity to benefit from cruelty-free, hypoallergenic bedding, basically. So again, it's tied in with that entire you know ethical element of it it's not mass produced it's you know niche again call to action purchase any bedding get a 20 pound discount you know again it's got contact details and a call to action it's even got a coupon so you can get your discount look at this little cute little lamb it's got down here look at the 
feeding the lamb with a bottle with a big smile on her face right not seeing all the wool getting sheared off the sheep and put into the into the duvet though are we um but the one that's really interesting i think up here is this red molotov um interesting why red well red's the color of socialism molotov a molotov cocktail is another name for a petrol bomb the you know the famous weapon of the oppressed minority um so this is your company logo a nice little tagline here bespoke upper torso coverage solutions so it's kind of a jokey kind of terminology there but the kind of t-shirts it's selling have got very definite messages going on look at this coexist one here it's that's a message that's very political notice how they've used the you know the islamic crescents the cnd campaign for nuclear disarmament peace logo um this one i'm assuming is something to do with gender equality we've got the star of david for the judaism we've got i don't know what they do with the eye kind of see what that is they've got the uh, the uh Taoist symbol of the the buddhist symbol of the um yin yang and then we've got the christian cross so it's using religious symbols and saying that we should all be open-minded and live together this is very liberal it's tying in with a very left-wing liberal attitude um this one here is a um a joke on physics basically it's to do with schrodinger's cat which is um, um an analogy that was used to explain quantum physics so it's assuming that the readership of the big issue are the kind of people who would get this joke and therefore they must be well educated um i'd rather be a rebel than a slave that's a famous quote by the um, suffragette leader emmeline pankhurst so again it's tying in with equality for women um this being a 2016 issue that was the 100th anniversary of the first women to get the vote i think um 1918 might have been actually and i think 1920 was all women got the vote can't remember off the top of my head but about that's about that time of the year um the century anyway, coming up on a, a centenary anyway um this woman don't remember her name off the top of my head but she was the first woman in space russian cosmonaut hey sky take off your hat i'm on my way was a quote of hers um this one that is the logo of the old gray whistle test which was a serious pop music program shown on bbc2 back in the 70s and early 80s which tells us something about the age of the people reading the magazine um this is the chemical composition of a human being so again that's a bit of a science joke so it's sort of like um relying on the audience having a high level of literacy and education so probably universally educated again call to action weird order ethically sourced t-shirts again ties in with the entire ethically sourced environmentally friendly kind of message that the audience are going to want to want obviously down here we've got our um gutters and our borders going around the edge up here this is classified advertising what is a classified ad um advertising arranged according to categories featuring items offered for sale at a set price for a set period of time ad is generally in small print so there's anyone can advertise in these they're not a main advertiser it's a lot cheaper so you can put little adverts in it right okay what else do we need to know so it all ties in with this idea of quality goods environmentally friendly products fair trade and organic so this is where the south down duvets comes in and the red molotov the ethical company element ties in with both of those social responsibility chain of hope ties in with that doesn't it socially and ethically and environmentally aware so spot on for the target audience um the last main advert we're going to look at is this one for center point which as you can see is a homeless charity giving homeless young people a future 
So again, very much tying in with the exact reason d'etre of the magazine in general. So what have we got here? We've got our title, risk being attacked on the freezing streets or risk being abused in a warm flat, which would you choose? Again, direct address is talking to you. Again, it's using that emotive personal element. Emma was 15 when her life fell apart. A family breakdown meant she had no choice but to leave home. Home was alone. Emma faced a terrifying choice. Sleep on the streets of the mercy of muggers and rapists or sleep in a flat used by addicts and abusers. Emma chose the flat, but the threat of abuse from her ex-predatory father and the drug users was too much. She was forced onto the streets. Now her life's in the hands of anyone who wants to take advantage of a yet vulnerable young girl as well as freezing temperatures. Just being homeless, you are twice as likely to die. Note it's got an asterisk there and it brings us down here to University of Sheffield 2012. So it's got evidence to back up what they're saying. This Christmas, our research indicates that almost 25,000 young people will be at risk, making dangerous choices like this just to survive. Some will sleep with strangers, some will self-harm to get into A&E, others will commit a crime to be taken into custody to avoid freezing to death. Thousands will have no choice but to rush sleeping rough. But there is another option, you, call to action. With your help, we can give young people like Emma a warm, safe room, a place they can call home this Christmas. Again, tagging on the heartstrings, using that personal direct address in the body copy. Right? Is this Emma? Seems unlikely. Probably a model. But the juxtaposition, the anchorage between the text and the image, make you think that that's Emma. What else are they doing? Black and white picture. Charoscuro lighting. That makes it seem harsher, it makes it seem colder, it makes it seem more depressing, but it also gives this documentary feel. Look at this sort of like font they're using here. This looks like a stencil font, as if it's been spray painted or stamped. Um, same they've used here, it gives it an official feel, um, but it's also kind of dark and grim looking. All of this down the bottom is a call to action. And this, of course, is your contact details. So getting the audience to actually do something. So from cultivation theory, um, it's telling, it, you know, this is the way we used to seeing homeless being, people being represented, is perpetuating a stereotype um, that, to be honest, the big issue is trying to break away from a little bit. Um, but it's also reinforcing mainstream values of charity of helping those who are less fortunate than ourselves again albert boundary's effects theory using that uh, hypodermic needle effect is injecting that message into our brains um, but also we've got a two-step flow model going on here if we look at the university of sheffield we believe what they're telling us because they can be trusted because they're a university those little icons down here like um, we use models and change the name of the young people we work with to protect their identity. However, all stories are true as told by young people. Um, those little scissors cut along the dotted line as a standard technique. A um, bit of iconography for you. Notes things like your donation will save and change lives. A tier of different things you can do. So, a bit archaic that really, I'm going to write it out and cut it out and post it in. What with the internet and all, you could do that online, but maybe that says something about the older audience. Last one, I Daniel Break Advert. We've been through this a lot, obviously, because we've already studied this, but the point is I'm getting at, this is on the back cover of this issue, all right? It is a kind of film and story that is, you know, big issue readers are exactly the kind of people who want to go and see I, Daniel Blake. Right? They're middle class, they're educated, they're left wing, they're socially conscious. Right? Um, the only thing that differs on this one from the ones we've already studied is if you see one film this year, see this highlight in italics. Can't read who says that it's not a very good quality picture but 
also worth mentioning this one because it's spot on for the kind of audience we're looking at in this kind of magazine um i'm actually surprised that the big issue isn't one of the um people quoted although to be honest the review for the big uh, for the dynamic blink is in this issue so you know unless they did it earlier in advance they wouldn't be able to put on the poster obviously anyway I'm not going to go into any detail on that one it's just one that is worth mentioning because you know we've already studied it right so that's it for that sorry the video is a bit long sorry the audio quality may not be spectacularly good because i'm using iphone headphones for this because i can't get my uh, microphone to work sorry if you can hear people doing their garden outside but you know no get over it right if anyone's got any questions you know where i am but you're going to have to do your own analysis on these, okay? Because we haven't got time to do it in class. Okay? Talk to you next time.